Thanks, Sudarshan, for those ideas. Uh, Pre-opening was okay, 59.20 on the Nifty, so the Nifty kept its head above that 5,900 level. Gautam Trivedi of Religare has joined in now. Gautam, good morning. Uh, so we've got $7 billion in this year, but that's not moved the market. What do you think is the problem? I think the retail investors continue to remain a problem. I think we've discussed this in the past as well, that the uh, retail investors, either they know something that we don't or the FIs know something that the retail investors don't. But the fact is, uh, retail investors continue to remain bearish on the market and are pulling out money uh, literally from all, all sides. We've seen uh, money being pulled out from uh, retail invest by, by, uh, by retail investors from mutual funds. Uh, now we're hearing about the life insurance companies that are continuing to pull, uh, see redemptions and of course, on the retail broking side, which we run one of the biggest franchises in the country, we continue to see uh, selling pressure as well. So I think that is unfortunately uh, the real reason why that's happening. What do you hear from them when you interact with them? Uh, why this pessimism and skepticism? Well, we don't get to interact that much with retail investors, but when I speak to my retail uh, uh, team in uh, Delhi, uh, apparently the, FI, the, the retail investors continue to prefer uh, even now, fixed income instruments, I think uh, the rate cut clearly was a positive but wasn't big enough and the yields aren't as yet uh, 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 unattractive enough to, for people to look at the equity markets. Secondly, uh, a lot of the action is shifted to the commodities uh, exchanges. Don't forget the commodity exchanges do not have any uh, uh, similar to STT, so that is uh, to some extent more lucrative. Uh, the volumes on the, on, on the commodity exchanges have more than doubled uh, that of the equity market. So there's a lot of action that shifted effectively there. And of course, real estate continues to remain a very uh, lucrative uh, uh, area of investments. Uh, gold, to some extent, has slowed down given the high prices and the increase in import duty. But I think uh, alternative investments can, can, can continue to remain more attractive uh, for retail investors versus the equity markets. Batam, hi, morning. Conversely, what do you what do you hear from the morning. FI crowd? I mean, is this interest uh, stock specific <coughs> in terms of OFSs, etc., that are hit, hitting the market, or do you expect this, these kind of flows to continue through February and March? Well, I expect the uh, flows to continue. The momentum is very strong. Uh, back in December, when I was in Asia meeting uh, FIs, <coughs> they had very clearly mentioned that uh, their interest in India is, is extremely strong. And come January, they would, uh, at least the long only, would allocate more money to India. And that's clearly happening uh, so far. So I think that momentum will continue, I, uh, notwithstanding, of course, the returns that have, haven't been great year to date. But uh, at some point, I think retail investors will have to obviously start uh, participating in the market because they will realize that uh, the intensity of the flows are so strong. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to now uh, continue to remain uh, net sellers. But I think that the market needs to reach at least another 10% higher for retail investors to come back in the market. So I think uh, in general, FIs remain pretty, uh, pretty supportive of the Indian uh, equity uh, story. Stay on Gotham. We'll come right back with many more questions for you. The pre-opening was not bad. Uh, Tata Motors was the star, sleeping below 5,900 yet again. Gotham Trivedi of Religare has been speaking to us. Gotham, this huge out underperformance that we are seeing from mid caps and small caps, is that also uh, reflective of the kind of uh, retail investor apathy that you were alluding to? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, if you look at the overall uh, interest levels from the retail side, whether it's this year or in the previous years, it's largely been concentrated on mid caps. Even now, when I speak to my uh, uh, retail team, uh, in, in general, the uh, a retail investor uh, interest is in stocks that are sub 100 rupees in absolute price. So obviously that mostly qualifies for mid caps and hence uh, I think uh, that's, that's what I believe would be uh, where you're seeing most of the selling pressure coming in right now. I see that you've got a buy on Ambuja and a hold on ACC but post their results there's been quite a bit of disappointment in cement. Uh, what makes you const constructive? Yeah, I think we are overall constructive on the cement space, uh, barring not just these two, but even others as well. A topic remains ultra tech cement, and uh, I think the the uh, overall uh, mood in, mood in the market has been slightly negative on cement simply because uh, we saw prices come off significantly in uh, the last quarter. A lot of that we believe was alluded to the fact that uh, both Ambuja and, and ACC have December year ends and were pushing volume uh, through into December. 
but of course that has started to reverse we've seen price rises come back quickly uh, in uh, across all the four metros and of course we're seeing even this like Lucknow Patna Hyderabad we're seeing uh, price increases come in of anywhere from 10 to 15 rupees a bag so given that uh, situation I think uh, we will see a much better fourth quarter and uh, if you look at uh, uh, Ultratech cement for example uh, EBITDA per ton was as much as 1000 rupees so results obviously are are uh, starting to still look pretty good uh, so we, we continue to remain bullish on the cement space. You have a sell on Jubilant Foodworks, the Gautama stock that cracked post the earnings warning and then rebounded very sharply. How are you calling that one? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we like the stock below a thousand rupees. I think valuation aside, but the overall growth clearly has come off significantly. I mean, same, same store sales. Uh, growth is down from a peak of 35% to now 16% and the management is guiding for potentially lower growth. So I think that's where we're coming from. I, we don't uh, have a problem with the stock from a fundamental standpoint. Uh, of course, then you've got integration, uh, not integration necessarily, but uh, CapEx related costs that will be absorbed because of Dunkin' Donuts. So I think uh, we, we, we have a sell on the stock, but I think sub 1000 rupees, the stock does look attractive. On this point that you made about the mid-caps though, Gautam, is that your sense of how the best part of this year may shape up with a, a lot of divergence in performance where the Nifty is held stable more or less by this FII appetite, but the mid-caps suffer quite a bit at the bottom? I think uh, yes and no. I mean, as, as much as retail investors have been uh, uh, pulling out of mid-caps, there is a whole swath of population of the FIs that actually are active investors in, in, in mid-caps as well. I don't want to necessarily name those those funds, but there's there's a lot of appetite from FIs for mid caps. So I think uh, if mid caps continue to fall, you will see a buying interest coming back in in, in uh, select names for sure. The other segment of the market which is getting pounded, Gautam, is metals. You've got sales out on names like JSPL, yeah. but generally, would you be cautious on the global commodity space? Yes, very much. I think we are still structurally very cautious of the metal space. Uh, of course, a lot depends on how China starts to change and increase its uh, overall uh, fixed asset investment. But we haven't seen any major evidence of that uh, as yet. And I guess uh, we're still uh, structurally negative on the metal space. Stay on Gotham. We'll come back in a bit. But the news from the market is not great. The Nifty continues in the same vein that it left off on Friday. We are below 5900 at 5890 actually, so down 12 points. And for the last few minutes consistently trading below 5900, uh, which is not a great sign. The Sensex has gone back below 19,500 now, 19,460. The mid cap index is down a third of a percentage point. And now the number of declining stocks is overpowering the number of advancing stocks. It's 500 to 450. So it's not been the best of starts uh, for trading this week. We'll come back with more. Thanks, Seema, for that. Uh, not a great-looking screen and below 5,900, but still a long trading day ahead. Let's see if things get repaired a little bit. GMR is one big loser, down 3% at 18.5 after the results, uh, which were disappointing. Uh, Gautam Trivedi of Religar uh, is still with us. Gautam, tactically, what do you think the market's uh, next move could be? Could retail be validated over the next few weeks if, uh, with a correction of 7-8% on the market? I don't think so yet. I don't see any sense of retail actually starting to get, find the ma market attractive as we discussed earlier. I think uh, between now and the budget anyway, I think the market is going to be largely flat. Uh, so I don't really expect anything major over the next few weeks uh, in, in the market, right? You think the news from the budget has been priced into the market already? The kind of good news which might come or do you expect any positive surprises there? I think uh, expectations this time around on the budget are actually quite low simply because a lot of reforms have already been announced over the past two months by the FM uh, and I think he's done a phenomenal job of uh, marketing uh, these reforms to uh, foreign institution investors. So I think a lot of that's already been priced in to some extent. <clears throat> but I think the fact is the market is still looking uh, for one major uh, signal which is fiscal consolidation. And I think if, if the FM uh, continues to remain fiscally tight as he, as he has been making the right moves, diesel deregulation, etc., I think the market will take that pretty positively and nobody wants a pre-election year uh, splurge uh, from the government and if, if uh, the government doesn't announce anything major in the budget, I think that will be a major, major positive. Mm. 
there's quite a bit of paper lined up for FY14 IE post March Gautam. I mean, there's Coal India, Navy League Ignite, there's new issues like Nuclear Corp, etc. Do you think that will fire up retail yeah. interest or unlikely? No, it could fire up retail in interest. I think let's not even forget the OFSs and the IPPs. We're looking at at least another 25 to 30,000 crores of uh, that uh, pipeline as well. So I think that will, again, I, I think a lot finally depends on uh, the pricing of these deals. And you know, if you have another Bharti in Fratel, that obviously will be taken pretty negative, ne uh, negatively by retail investors. At, at, you know, so that you have you have that on one hand. On the other hand, you have an NTPC which was extremely well priced. Stocks trading above, at least was trading above on Friday, above its issue price of 145. So, I think it boils down to pricing. The government seems to be definitely more prudent about uh, the way they want to price these deals and make it attractive and leave something on the table for investors, whether it be retail or institutional. Mm. Uh, the other thread that's being tied into this underperformance, Gautam, is the fact that uh, ever since the, the Reserve Bank policy day, the market has started underperforming and actually losing <coughs> ground. Is it that a lot of the domestic guys sense there weren't that there wasn't that much happening in terms of bells and bells and chimes towards rate cuts for the rest of the year? I don't think so. No, I think people are hopeful, and I think the the the. The uh, mood clearly is that uh, the RBI will oblige with more rate cuts uh, throughout the year. We are in fact uh, uh, looking at potentially another 100 basis points uh, through uh, this calendar year. And if that were to come through, that would be taken extremely positively by the market. But I think a lot depends really on what the RBI wants to do finally. This quarter, PSU bank results have been poor, uh, Gautam, but private sector has been better. But I see that you actually want to buy SPI and sell Axis Bank. Yeah, I'll tell you where that's coming from. I think uh, there's been uh, a structural uh, negative view on PSU banks back even in December when I was in Asia meeting investors along with my banks analysts. The overall preference was still extremely strong towards privates uh, versus PSUs, even though we explained that the fact that the premium of privates over PSUs was as, as high as about 170%. Now, that's contracted a bit since the rally in the PSU banks, but I think in the past few weeks, especially in the past few days, we've seen uh, a, a significant uh, sell down in PSU banks. So I think that's starting to happen. But I think there is, you know, the, the, the eternal debate between PSUs and privates. And I think w the one view which an FIA gave me last week, which is really pretty interesting, he said, Gautam, 10 years ago, you had two uh, private sector banks taking on the might of the PSUs, i.e. Uh, HDFC Bank and ICICI. You have three more, Access Bank, Yes Bank and Intercent Bank. And with new banking licenses coming through, potentially another three to four. So I think the fact is, what's the structural view on the PSU banking space? And the structural view is, is, is not very positive, frankly. So that's, I think that's really where most of the foreign investors seem to be coming from. There's been a tinge of disappointment with many of the consumer facing names of late. You spoke about Jubilant, but also with Titan. But you think this is an opportunity to buy that name? Uh, we structurally like the story. I think uh, the stock needs to correct a little bit more. I mean, the impact of the uh, increase in uh, the import duty on gold will, will clearly play out in uh, maybe next quarter's numbers. Uh, so I think you will see some of that, you know, starting to get factored in, in, in into the price. But uh, structurally, we do, we, you know, it's, it's a straight uh, play on, on the Indian consumer and uh, has been obviously a phenomenal story over the past uh, 10 years. Given the point you were making about FI interest, Gautam, any uh, limbs in line in mind, a level below which you think the market may not fall around this budget event? I think uh, if you look at the uh, uh, where you where you're seeing people buy most of the protection, that's at about 5,900. I think the stock, I think the index might go maybe another 100 or maybe 200 points below that, but that's really it. I don't see that much uh, weakness uh, in the market between now and the budget, frankly. So, if the market does grind here or correct a little bit. What kind of sectors or stocks would you st advocate your investors to be to be topping up on? Sure, I think uh, I would ask them to look at the private sector banks uh, if, if if they do end up correcting a bit from here. Cement is another space that we like a lot, uh, and within the autos, uh, we like uh, Tata Motors, we like Bajaj, and we like Mahindra. So these three names stand out. We are, by the way, uh, uh, starting to get 
starting to reach a consensus internally on whether Maruti is a, is a sell from these levels and I think given how the yens depreciated as much as 20% since October and this stock has clearly been a beneficiary of that but I think at some point this stock turns out to be a sell but apart from that I think we like uh, the names I just, I just gave you. Thanks Gautam, good talking to you as always. Thanks for joining in today. That's really Gear's <laughs> list of uh, preferences. Markets remain very sluggish, 58.90 on the Nifty, it's still stuck there. Sensex down about 30 odd points. Um,